So in the previous approach, we implicated this formula in order to find out the rectangular area. And we did this for every A of I. For every A of I, we did this. And this was a two-pass solution where we had to figure out the left smaller as well as the right smaller. How to convert this two-pass into a one-pass solution? Now, if you remember, while finding out the left pass, we implemented a stack which was containing everything in the linearly increasing fashion. We're going to use that. Let's see how. Now, imagine, imagine, I, I give you something like an histogram. I give you some an histogram which states uh, this is a block two. Uh, this is a block. Uh, let's assume this is a block three. This is a block two. Okay. And this is a higher block of block 10. And this index is 0, 1, 2. This is again a block of 11 size. Okay. And this is having a block of size 5, which is at index 4. And at index 5, again, you have something as a block 10. And over here, you have a block 6. Okay. At index 6. And right at index 7, right at index 7, you have a block 3. Assume this is the histogram that we consider. Now, if you remember the previous uh, uh, previous process of finding the left smaller, the moment you come to this element, I'll just talk about this element, and after that I'll do one complete trial. The moment you come to this index 7, can I ask you what will be there on, on the stack? It will be like the stack, the stack which contains index will contain everything in the linearly fashion. When you come to the 7, what will it have? It will have this guy, it will have this guy and it will have this guy. You can definitely do a dry run and you'll see that the stack will contain the index 1, the index 4, the index 6. And the index 6 is having 6, the index 4 is having 5, the index 1 is having 2. This is what the stack will contain the moment you reach A of 7 equal to 3. Correct. You can do a dry run for finding the left smaller and you'll find that whenever you are at A of 7, you'll contain this only. Now I'm talking about the intuition now. Now can I say, instead of finding for A of I, instead of finding for every A of I, you will try to find the rectangular area for these guys. 6, 4, 1 indexes. Now you'll be like, how will this work? This will work. I'll tell you how will this work. See, the moment you are at 6, the moment you are at 6, let's consider this as the height. What will be its right smaller? And what will be its left smaller? Let's think about that. Can I say the right smaller will be nothing but for the 6, if you are comparing this with 3, that's going to be your right smaller. This is what is going to be your right smaller. Indeed, indeed. Before 6, the index that you have in your stack, because this is a linearly increasing order. Before 6, you have a 4. So can I say, this guy will become my left smaller for this index, this height 6. Indeed. So without actually doing a couple of passes, for 6, I could figure out the right smaller is this guy, the left smaller is this guy, and that is that makes sense. I could. So that was for 6. Correct. Let's do it for the next one. Now what do you do in the next step? You compare 3 with 6. Now once you've got for 6, you remove 6, right? That is what you did in stack because it was greater. Next, you compare 3 with 4. Now, when you are at the 4th index, this is the 4th index. For this guy, since you are comparing with 3, can I again say that this guy will become my right smaller? Again, makes sense if you look at around the right, this 3 is indeed your right smaller, correct? For this 5, can I say the left smaller is right before this element, right before this index 1. Again, this will become your left smaller. So, as you can see, I have the left smaller index 1, the right smaller index 7. So can I say the width? Can I say the width for this guy will be from here to here? Can I say that will be my width? Yes. Yes. Again, I figured out the left smaller, right smaller in one step. Let's do it for the next. Next, what did you do? With this 3, you compared 4 and you removed. So as of now, you have a 1 and you compare that with 3. So... This is the moment you can say key. This one is no more comparable with three because it is smaller. So you'll not do anything and you'll pick this three and you'll put it over here. Got it? 
So every element in the stack can actually tell you he, which is your left smaller, which is your right smaller. Now this is where your iteration will be over and you'll reach an index 8. You'll reach an index 8. So the moment you reach an index 8, you still have 1, 3. But the histogram is over. Doesn't matter. Even if your histogram is over, you are at a, a, a of 8. You are at A of 8. Can I say for this 3, for this 3, the right, on right you don't have anyone. On right you don't have anyone. So can I say for this 3, the right smaller will be 8. That's, that's your right smaller because you don't have anyone. And can I say the left smaller will be this guy. Again, I have figured out for this 3 also. For this 3 also. Just you need to do is iterate till 8. So you can easily figure out for 3. Remove 3. Next you can figure this for this one also. For this one, there is no one on the right. So 8th index will be this. And there is no one on the bottom of 1. So the left index will be this 0. So that's what my thought process will be in order to solve this problem. I hope you have understood the thought process. Now we'll do a simple dry run so that we can quickly wrap up this problem. So I hope you have understood my thought process. Like how do I plan to get the right smaller and left smaller in a single pass. That's time to uh, do a dry run so that you get a much more clarity about this. So what we will do is we will keep the max area as 0. Okay, we have kept the max area as 0. And now we will start off with the 0th index. So we have a 3 over here. So the stack is already empty. So there is no one on the stack for which we can find the right smaller as well as the left smaller. So I'll take the 0th index and I'll store it on the stack. Okay, done. Next, we will come to this index 1. When you come to this index 1, that's a value array of 1, which is 1. So you compare this with this array of 0, that is 3. So you find this out key, this guy is greater than this. Hence, hence, for this guy, the right smaller is this guy with an index 1. The right smaller is at index 1. Right? And this guy is removed. Right smaller you have figured out and you will remove this guy. Okay. So you know the height as of now is 3. The height is 3. For this guy 0, you have figured out the right smaller is this. Who, who will be the left smaller? Do you have anything before that? If you do not have before that, you know the stack was the increasing order. Can I say there is no one before that? So can I say the starting index? The starting index will indeed become your left smaller which can be treated as zero so in such cases you can say whatever is your right smaller the total will become your width the total will become your width hence i can say the width is one hence the maximum area for this three comes out to be three so i can update our maximum area so once you have done this take this index one put it into your stack put it into your stack Next, you'll come to this index 2. Okay. Now, at this index 2, you have a 5. You compare this index 1 value, which is 1. So, you don't find it greater. So, what you'll do is, you'll just take this index 2 and you'll put it over here. Whenever there is uh, nothing as greater, just take it and put it over here. Next, you come to index 3. What's the value that you have? That's a value of 6. So, what you'll do is, again, you compare that. That's not greater. So, you'll take this index 3 and you'll put it over here. Try to create the linear increasing fashion. Okay. Next, you'll come to this 4. Now, at this 4, you see that we have a 2 which is smaller than the top of this. And if that is the case, if that is the case, you'll take this guy 3, which is this 6. You'll take this 3, which is having a block size of 6. You're having a block size of 6. And you will say this guy, your right smaller is this index 4. Right? And your left smaller is nothing but this because for this guy the previous increasing the previous is 2 so your left smaller is this so can i say the width is 4 minus 2 4 minus 2 minus 1 that's 1 hence for a block of 6 the width becomes 1 very simple whatever right smaller you find it over here whatever left smaller you find it over here just do a minus 1 because this is left smaller correct so so across, across. So just do a minus 1. 4 minus 2 minus 1 will be 1. So for the 6, again, for this 3 you have figured out. For the 6 I have figured out.
that's six. So that is done. So once you have done for six, make sure you remove this. Okay, removed. What is the next criteria? You compare this two with this five. Again, five is greater. If it is greater, I'll consider this block five. Okay, and that block five is at index two. For this index two, can I say this index four becomes my right smaller? Indeed, indeed, that becomes my right smaller. Can I say my left smaller will be someone before that index one? Yes. So can I say this is my width? Indeed, four minus one is three. So this is the width. Can I say for five? For five, I'll have four minus one three minus one. That is two width. So I'll get five into two. I'll get a max area of ten. Okay. So first I got three. Then I got a six. Then I got a ten. So you can keep on updating. You can keep on updating. So I'm getting all the max areas again. The block five has also been computed. Next, you'll just remove this two. You'll just remove this two, and next you'll compare this two with this one. Again, that is not greater. So I'll just take this index four, and I'll put this two. Try to maintain the linearly increasing order. So this four is also done. Next, move to this index five. The moment you move to index five, you have area of five. As three, so the value two is not greater than three. So again, you maintain the linearly increasing fashion. So that's the index five containing a value three. Just try to maintain the linearly increasing fashion. Nothing else. So I've maintained it. I've maintained it. But still, this block, this block, this block has not been considered into the area. So what you'll do is you'll just do one more iteration for this block six. Okay, like. There are indexes. These are the indexes, correct? It starts from zero, one, two, three, four, five. We'll go on till six. We'll go on till one more. So we will move to six. Now, as you can see, you have just done for the histogram of height three, five, six. Still left off with one, two, and three, and these are present in your stack. So we're going to use them. So what we will do is we'll do one more iteration. If the indexes are till five, you're going to do one more iteration till the index six. Okay. Now what you'll do is, since this is the last index, you don't need to do anything. You just pick up the fifth index guy. You picked up the fifth index guy, which is a block of size three. For this index, can I see the right smaller? Is definitely this because beyond this I don't have anyone. Beyond this I don't have anyone. So the right smaller becomes six. Can I say for this the left smaller will be this index four? Yes, because that's before that, correct? So can I see the Width. Can I say the width will become six minus four? That is two minus one. That's one. Again, makes sense because one is the width for three. One is the width. So three crossed one becomes three. Three crossed one becomes three. Next, you'll come to this fourth index. So when you come to this fourth index, you have a block size of two. Correct. Take this off. Since you've come across to this, take this off. Now, can I say for this guy, the right smaller will be six itself, and can I say for this, the left smaller will be whatever is before that. That's one. Again, makes sense. If you look at this two, the right left smaller is this, so you'll come across over here, and the right smaller is no one. So can I say the difference is six minus one? That's five, and the width length becomes four. So two plus four is eight. So this is also done. This is also done. So again, you can erase this. Next, we'll come to this one. So that one will be also taken out. So you have a block uh, height of one at index one. What will be the right? The right will definitely be uh, something as six. That's your right smaller. What will be a left smaller? The left smaller will be nothing but zero. So can I say six zero? Can I say the width length is one, two, three, four, five, six? So in cases where your left smaller becomes zero. You can take this right smaller, whichever is it, as your complete width, because it's gonna maintain the complete one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're gonna say one. That's this block multiplied with six. That's six. So as you can see, I've actually covered up every block, and out of this, the maximum is ten. Did I do double passes? Did I do double passes? No. I just did a single pass. Just I made sure. I just increased the pass from zero to six instead of zero to five. And I was able to do it. So I hope the entire intuition is clear. What is the time complexity? 
time complexity is bigo of n for traversing a bigo of n throughout for maintaining the stack i might argue why not n square because yaar har baar every time you are not removing every element from the stack every time you are not removing every element from the stack hence it's a n plus n what about the space complexity is just a bigo of n solution so that's the time complexity this is as good as a big o of n and it's far better than the previous solution now generally if this question is asked in an interview i'll suggest you to stop at the previous solution unless and until the interviewer says you to please optimize this also then only you, you should go otherwise this solution you should not tell him because this requires some skill to explain otherwise it's going to be an entire mess the interview is going to be an entire mess so make sure you only tell the solution if he asks you to optimize the previous one okay so now it's a time to discuss the code so let's understand the c++ code again the java code link will be given in the description it's extremely identical because we are just using for loops and stacks so that is also present in java so both the codes are extremely identical so what you can do is you can open the java code link in some other tab and you can follow my explanation you'll understand the java code as well so what we are given is an array of histograms heights right after that i declare i get the size of that array and i declare a stack and a maximum area after that you know we have to iterate from 0 to n lesser than equal to n because as you remember at the end if there is something left in the stack we need to compute for those guys as well the in the example that we took now the first step that we always check is is the stack non empty right that is the first check we always do right after that either either it's the last index so if it is the last index everything that is left in the stack has to be computed or else you just operate like you just operate by removing the greater than element you just remove the greater elements so for a greater element for a greater element that's the height histo of st dot top because the indexing is stored over here so once you get the height can i say you can pop it out so currently we have the height of the histo for that for which we are looking to compute the width so can i see the width will be i what does that mean if the stack is empty that means for the current stack element it has a above guy which is definitely smaller the right one we have got right smaller we have got correct but does it have a left smaller if the stack becomes empty beneath the stack there is no one so can i say the width will become the entire i or the wherever the right smaller guy stands till the zeroth index that that will be the entire width and if the stack is non empty then i'll say the width will be whatever is at bottom like right after that element in the stack right after that whatever is on the stack I'll take that and I'll compute the width. Once I've computed the width, I can do a width into height, and I'll get an easy maximum area. And once all of these things are done, I can take the current element and I can just push it. Just in case the element was smaller, just in case the element that we got was greater than the stack. So what we'll do is we'll simply push. That will not go into the while loop. So with the help of the stack, we can maintain the linearly increasing order. And whenever we get elements that are greater we can just compute the maximum area for that so just in single pass you can find the maximum area and you can return it so instead of doing multiple passes that we did in the previous code over here we are doing single passes so guys this will be it for the c++ code i know uh, you might still find it confusing the best way to understand this code is probably take some other examples and try to do a dry run on this code so the more you do a dry run the more clear it will get to you so just uh, try doing it so once you have done it i think that should be clear so guys i hope you have understood the entire explanation as well as this wonderful short code just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you are new to our channel do consider subscribing with this let's wrap up this video bye bye take care